The sauce is good. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So we got to do. All right. So now here's the next part. So we that was the. I mean that's kind of where you go with math a little bit, right? And here's 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 what I want you to see about this though. I I honestly, this is like I studied physics, but I my personal opinion, and I kind of would follow some of the people that I really respect intellectually, the you know some Nobel laureates that are would rather see us do less story problem stuff in math and more math. And I totally believe that's the way to go. I think it's because in order to really get to a point where you can start to do cool stuff like what I showed you, and you can't. I mean, it's not like this requires you to be some kind of superhuman intelligence. And if you want to be an engineer or you want to be you know, a scientist that, that studies phenomena, you know, a physicist or a biologist or a microbiologist, you don't have to be have ridiculous IQ to do that stuff. I promise you, you don't. You just have to know lots of math. You have to know it well. So if you really have interest in being, you know, an economist, or you want to be all these great jobs that, that come along with interesting things to do and great pay, and you first just have to understand math really well. That's 90% of what I did in physics was just math. But it was cool because it was like the math that explained the way things work. I mean, it's, it's an interesting application of math. All right, but let's talk some math. Okay, so you can get to study superfluidity someday. All right, so I want to do a couple things today. We're going to make one small step forward, but I want to, I want to show, I, I put together uh, a little Desmos document that I think is really going to help you. There's, I, you know, I understand why this is the case, but there still is a gap. You guys are able to solve problems like this. I know that. You've done it. You've done it on tests. You've done it on assignments. But I still feel like there's a little bit of a conceptual gap between being able to solve the problem and being able to really understand conceptually what you did, right? So what would we do with a problem like this if we want to choose the graph? What are the values? This is just a quadratic function that we could think of as being in vertex form, right? So quadratic function in vertex form just looks like this, right? It's a times quantity x minus h squared plus k. We're real familiar with that. We call it vertex form because the coordinates of the vertex are just h and k. So there they are. And a is the vertical dilation. So what are h and k for this function? Nothing. Meaning zero. Zero. zero, right? So the vertex is going to be at the origin, right? h and k are zero. What's a? Negative four. Okay. So let's, let's look at how I'm going to I think this will really help. Let's look at this Desmos document and let's just explore this a little bit. So if we did, where is this thing? Right here. Okay, so here's what I built. And I'll, I'll put a link to this so you guys can, you can go to this and mess with it if you want. Uh, so this is just, I just built this little document. You can drag these sliders for A and for capital H, which I'll explain in a second or type in values, you know, just by sliding these things around, to transform the red function, which is the parent graph, f of x equals x squared. Everybody close up your, close these up. I insist, you gotta really see this. So you gotta be, click them all the way close. To the blue, g of x, which is gonna be a times x squared, right? So the only difference is we're going to take this regular parent function and we're going to vertically dilate it by a. Right, so A is the vertical dilation factor. H, H is just going to choose the horizontal distance between the vertex and some other point. Okay, so for example, let's, uh, let's take, let's let H be 1. So if I drag H down to 1, and how about if I zoom in a little bit here? Okay, so that makes sense, right? If the horizontal distance from the vertex to this point on the parent graph is 1, what should the vertical distance be? 1, right? Because it's an x squared graph. So the horizontal distance squared gives you the vertical distance, right? So 1 squared is 1. And notice that we're starting at the point 0, 0, and that point on the red graph is at 1, 1. Not a surprise, right? So what if we want to dilate this? Let's dial in a value of a. Let's make a 2. Does that make sense? Let me, let me turn on these 
labels too. Does that make sense? What did we just do? Turn on the labels. Turn on the labels, but, but by dialing in a value of A that's equal to 2, look what we did. The dilated graph is the blue one. The parent graph is the red one. Notice that the horizontal distances are the same for both, right? Mm -hmm. So what did we do? You went up I, I, I went up by 1, but more importantly, I multiplied that distance by 2, right? Mm -hmm. So the original vertical distance times <clears throat> 2 gives me the final vertical distance. You see that? So I think what's really cool about this is it kind of allows you to see. I've talked to you uh, many times. I've, I've said these words. And you guys have nodded your heads and probably partly understood this, but I think it's better to see it. We've talked about how if I vertical di vertically dilate something, the, the, the points on the graph are only being moved vertically, right? The horizontal distance is staying the same. Does that make sense? Okay, watch this. You can see that happening. Let me zoom out a little bit, right? And if, if I change the value of A, look what it's doing, right? Look at that. It's just pulling this thing, squeezing it up or down, right? But the horizontal distance stays the same, right? So if I start at 1, I haven't done anything. The blue graph, complete, it's just the same as the parent graph. But as soon as I start to dilate that thing and I multiply by a value different than 1, it starts to change the vertical distances, right? So what's going to happen if I make that negative 4? Well... I make it negative 4, it's right there, isn't it? Right? Everybody see that? What did we just do? Okay, well, yeah, I mean, to find that, here's my initial vertical distance, right? If the horizontal distance is positive 1, we can see that the vertical, the initial vertical distance is 1, right? That's what the parent graph does for a horizontal distance of 1. Okay, what's the final vertical distance? Well, the final vertical distance after dilation, meaning how far is the point away from the vertex vertically after stretching it, is how far? Oops, wrong color. What's that distance? Negative 4. Negative 4, right? Because it's 4 below. Oh, hey, these got to be closed all the way. All the way. <coughs> All the way. So this is negative 4. So how do we get there? Well, what does A do? It multiplies the initial vertical distance to get the final vertical distance. So here's what we did. This 4 comes from positive 1 times A, which is negative 4, equals 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Right? So if I'm given a graph, let's say I don't know, for example, what the, what the vertical dilation is, but I want to find out. Well, I could just ask myself, I could do the same thing I just did, right? I could say positive 1 times A has to equal negative 4, because that's what the final vertical distances, right? How would I solve for A? Well, divide, divide by 1, but that's not good. It's just, I don't even have to do it. This just tells us that A equals negative 4. Remember, I've talked to you about how you can always, if you want to find the dilation, you can always just divide the final value by the initial value, right? We can do that too. What's the final value divided by the initial value? Negative 4 divided by 1 is negative 4, right? Okay, now we're going to play a little game here. I'm going to not show you, but I'm going to dial in a different dilation based on the graph. I want you to tell me what it is, okay? So to make this even trickier, I'm going to choose a different horizontal value, horizontal distance. Let's choose horizontal distances of 2 this time instead, okay? If I choose a horizontal distance of 2, does this point make sense on the paragraph? Yeah. Right? It does, doesn't it? For a horizontal distance from the vertex of 2, on the parent graph, the vertical distance of the point from the vertex would be 2 squared, or 4. All right? Okay? All right. So,
There we go. Okay, so here it is. Now I'll put this in a better spot so you can see what's going on. There. Okay, stare at that a little bit. I want you to tell me what A is. What's the vertical dilation factor? What do you think? Is that, is that three? Yeah. Yep. It's three. Everybody see that? How come? Yeah. Good. Everybody see that? Because the initial vertical distance of four times three is 12. Yeah. Right? Okay, let's do it again. One more. Okay, this time I'm going to make H equal to... Seven. That's pretty big. I'll make it four. That's still pretty big because these things grow pretty fast. All right, so here you go. No cheating. Can't see what I'm doing. Okay, a couple quick questions here. What what's my horizontal distance? This time? Four. four. No big deal. That's really not important. The horizontal distance is four. What's my initial or my parent vertical distance? When the horizontal distance is four, it's sixteen, right? Good. What's my transform, my final vertical distance? Negative two. Negative eight, right? Oh eight. Okay. So then I want to know final divided by initial. What's what's my what's it? What's the vertical dilation? Negative, 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 negative two. Not two. Would be four. No. It's not. But well, you're doing it backwards. You never, dilation factor is always what you end up with divided by what you started with. So final divided by initial. So I'm starting with 16, right? That's the parent. Yeah. I'm ending up with negative 8. Negative 8 divided by 16? Yeah. What's that? Uh, yeah. Well, what fraction is that? What's 8, what's eight over 16? Negative 1 half. Negative 1 half, right? Okay, good. Does that make sense? Okay, there it is. If we look up here, sure enough, there's that's what A is, negative 1 half, negative 1 half, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So now, next next step. So let's take something. Okay. You're dead. Does that help to look at it that way? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at this. So next step. How are we doing? Time. Oh, I got to hustle. Okay. So what about this one now? Let's this is get through this last part here. So here's our next step. We want to be able to take a photo. We've already done this, right? We've already done stuff like this. This is one step harder because h and k aren't zero, but it's not much harder. All this means is that. The graphs start from here instead of from there, right? Phones away, please. Phones away. So if we want to write this in vertex form, it's easy. What are H and K? Uh, the point. So what are those numbers? One five. one, five, right? Because those are the coordinates of the vertex, right? So one goes in for H and five goes in for K. Okay, to find A, what would we do? Well. What's the, here's my vertex, there's my second point. What's the horizontal distance? Uh, five or six. Five Looks like I'm going from one up to six, so how far did I go? One, five. two, three, four, five, right? Okay, so where is the point on the parent graph going to be? If I go horizontally from the vertex by five, my vertical distance from the vertex must be? Mm, no, no. Parent graph, it's an x squared graph. Now think about the shape of a parabola. Like if I look at a parent graph, think about a parabola for just a second about what it really looks like. A parabola looks like that, right? What's going on there? As I go to the right, the amount of increase in y gets bigger and bigger and bigger as I go further to the right. Does that make sense? How are we accomplishing that? Because if I, if I go to the right by 5 and up by 5, that's not a, that's not a parabola. That's an absolute value function. 
right? If I'm going over 5 and up 5, over 10 and up 10, right? That's different. This one doesn't ever accelerate upwards like a parabola does. Why does the parabola get so big so fast? Because when I go over by 5, I'm not going up by 5. I'm going up by not 10. Think it's f of x equals x squared. 25, right? Right? That's the recipe. I'm going over by 5. It must be going up by that amount squared because that's the function, right? So I'm going up by 25. Way up there somewhere, right? Okay, well, where do I end up? What's my final vertical distance after I drag that point by, by vertically translating or dilating it? it? It goes from way up there down to there. Well, where's there? How far down is it now? Five. So it's negative five, right? Because it's down five. So what's the dilation factor? Then it starts at positive 25 and ends at negative five. What do I multiply by? Final divided by initial. What's that? Negative five. Negative five. Not five. Because well, because negative five times twenty-five would be negative one twenty-five. Would be way down there. Negative one fifth. There it is, right? Negative positive twenty-five times negative one fifth is negative five, right? Okay. So I know that a then. A equals negative one-fifth. So it's easy to put this into vertex form. That's no big deal, right? Vertex form, you guys have already done this stuff. I wouldn't say it's easy, but you know how to do it. And it's, it's, this is a great form of the quadratic function because this is the one that's built for graphing, right? So to get from here, That's, that's easy. But now the next step is to get same graph to get to that point. Okay, how am I going to do that? How am I going to get from vertex form to general form? No, okay, now I know what you're thinking. Now you guys are thinking about, you guys have already done the opposite. You've started with something in this form and you found a graph. And how did you do that? You said, okay, we can use a trick. We can use the trick that h equals negative b over 2a, right? That tells us the x-coordinate of the vertex. To get the y-coordinate, Jonathan, close that up, please. To get the y-coordinate, which is k, we just feed that x-coordinate into the function, right? And then a is still a, right? That still tells us vertical dilation factor. But if we want to retrace our steps, now this is different. We're starting from the graph, trying to work backwards to the function, right? So we're going to kind of go through that same middleman. We're going to say, okay, well, we know what this graph corresponds to in terms of a vertex form equation. All I've got to do is transition from vertex form into general form. That's easy to do. All I have to do literally is just, and I'm not going to have time to do it today. All we're going to do is just simplify that with order of operations, right? I'm, there's, I'm just going to say, okay, inside the parentheses, there's nothing to do, but there's an exponent. So I'm just going to multiply x minus 1 times x minus 1. Right? Get an answer. Today, you're going to write the bus. That's just a number, 111. We'll finish it up on Monday. I've got a video up of me doing this whole thing if you want to get started. small <laughs> gig. Thank you.